Hi everyone, I'm Joe. Today it's time for me to do a book review of the Wormwood Trilogy written by Ty Thompson. This science fiction trilogy was first published between the years of 2017 and 2019. So it is a very recent and modern science fiction trilogy and one that I personally enjoyed a lot. The three books that comprise this trilogy are Rosewater, Rosewater Insurrection, and finally, Rosewater Redemption, which for the record, I can't help but keep calling Rosewater Resurrection because it's, it's similar each sounding word and it does sort of apply for the book, let's say. Anyway, so this is a very interesting trilogy as I said and I will start off with a synopsis of the trilogy. So it starts off in London, England, at least the history does with an alien which becomes nicknamed Wormwood in the name of the trilogy and as it is focused around this alien entity comes down to earth um, in the capital of the UK and it's not made very welcome obviously it's a big strange alien thing it's got all strange like uh, parts sticking out of it it's partially submerged in the ground or, or burrowed underground it doesn't do very well in London, basically of the UK government and such do not like this alien creature, this alien thing there. So essentially it is forced for its own safety and that of frankly it's you know sort of um in existence and possible others members of its own species, we are not entirely sure of that, to basically move on. So it burrows underground and it disappears for a number of years. Then a number of years later it resurfaces. This time however it is in Nigeria. So it comes up uh, above ground or partially above ground I should say in Nigeria. Uh, parts of it are like big weird pylons which you can get electricity from and essentially a city which comes to be known as Rosewater is formed around it obviously that grows over time and becomes a fully functioning town. Now one of the main draws of the Rosewater city um, as the way to live is that this alien creature seems to have a strange effect around it almost like a sort of a bubble of um, sort of energy around it and it seems to have a very strange effect on humanity physically because if you go to uh, live in Rosewater and you are injured, just being near it can heal you back to what you were. However, it's a random, essentially sort of a DNA mutator, however, so it can um, heal you back to what you were, but it might not necessarily work. It actually essentially might mutate you worse, and instead of, for instance, if you've lost an arm, instead of regrowing the arm, it might grow something else there instead, or remove both your arms, or some other hideous and truly awful thing so basically you're taking quite a chance and a bit of a you know gamble or if you actually want to risk going there to heal yourself because some of the negative effects can be truly awful and frankly will make your life living hell and frankly in some cases some people will end their lives because of the incredible amount of pain and suffering they then have to go through I mean, this is not a most cheerful book at times. I mean, it did deal with some pretty dark subjects. Anyway, after Rosewater gets established, and this obviously then follows the course of the three books, basically it is about the evolution and sort of growth of Rosewater as a city. The Nigerian government doesn't like it being as independent as it is, but the mayor, who becomes a major character, along with many other people, like it being independent, they don't want it just to be, you know, sort of taken over by the Nigeria, Nigerian government and sort of controlled totally or military like. And they want it to be like an independent nation or sort of um, city state essentially. And this presents problems to everybody involved because some, obviously some people would like the idea, some people really don't. So this is problematic. And this is basically where the major plot line starts in the first book and obviously it goes in the second and third. I don't want to say too much about the plot line further than that because it will give away 
for massive boilers, but it's very intricate, very nuanced, and very complicated. Uh, although, strangely enough, at times it can be remarkably straightforward. It sounds uh, obscure me saying that because how can it be both complicated and really simple at times? But there is a reason why it is, and I don't want to say because it's one of, it's one of them books where that aspect of it you really should experience for yourself. First, to say though, the writing, the style of it is what makes this book work extremely well. Tay Thompson has a writing style and a pacing that just works incredibly well. You are given the information in a way that feels very natural and not forced. The alien uh, wormwood and all the people that live around it, obviously in the town of Rosewater itself, uh, and in fact it's one of the rare circumstances where Rosewater actually has a personality for a town which does happen occasionally but it's only so many years that I encounter a situation like this where an actual location has a personality. Rosewater is one of them. The city has a living aspect to it. You know, it lives, it breathes, obviously for its people but its people are so well integrated into the city that it just works. It is one and the same thing. The Rosewater is its people. The people are Rosewater is the same and it works amazingly well and one of the reasons why it works so incredibly well as well is because of the characters. Now one of the major characters especially in the later two books, the first book he only plays a relatively minor role, is the mayor of Rosewater. He's an interesting character. I don't want to say why but he's got a very interesting personality and it uh, complements and contrasts well with several other uh, characters. Uh, another major set of characters is one called Caro. He's actually a psychic, which I forgot to mention. Rosewater, as well as creating this field of essentially sort of healing ability around it, or possibly mutation, depending on the circumstances, it also seems to open up um, a, essentially a sort of psychic field as well. So certain people, there's no rhyme or reason to it, they just seem to have a natural affinity for it. Seem to have a psychic ability kind of switched on in their minds. Therefore they become psychic. Caro, there are, there are not a number, a uh, large number of psychics by the way, at least there's only a small number. Of that small number, Caro is one of the strongest going he's known to be. And there's a special uh, agency which is controlled by a uh, character called Febby, who is a very strong and um, interesting uh, female character who has got a phenomenal personality, it's almost overwhelmed other characters at times, but she's actually a brilliant character and the way she's described as acting and being around others is frankly fantastic. The way that obviously she wants to use Caro as her basically sort of psychic enforcer essentially for all intents and purposes, you know, we've obviously mind reading any suspects to see whether they're telling the truth or lying it can be very useful but obviously it brings up all sorts of ethical problems and moral uh, questions as well because of course is it right to do that? Some people don't seem to think that it's, it should even be a question it's like so what? It's, uh, it's an option so let's do it. Some people are like well just because you can do something doesn't mean you should which is an interesting question it's asked all the time throughout the book you know so, you, you have the ability to do certain things, whether the action is good or bad. And some people don't question whether you should do them though, they just think, well, if you can do them, you obviously have to do them. But that's not always the case. You know, I mean, just because you can kill somebody doesn't mean you should go and do it. Frankly, I mean, the most brutal and sadly really quantifiable. You know, there is limits to where you can go. And it's finding these limits and finding these boundaries between you know what you can do and what you should do and what you in fact can do you know in, in theory and it brings some interesting questions up and this collection of characters of which there are more but others well I mean uh, one that knows um, Caro very well is a character called Amina she's also a very strong female character frankly Ty Thompson does a good job of writing strong female characters that work well within this environment. They're all well written, interact well, their dialogue actually is real, 
and feel normal. It's not forced in any way. It's not like, yes, the characters do obviously do a certain amount of the description and backstory for Wormwood and other aspects of like Rosewater and stuff, for instance. But it doesn't feel as though they're doing any forced history lesson where they are there forced to sit there like, this is the way that Wormwood existed. This is the way that this exists. It's not forced. This is natural. And it really works very well. And one of the major reasons why it works well is the world building and the environment. Because, frankly, uh, the Wormwood and Rosewater, that uh, town that's been developed around it, is, a, as I said, a living, breathing town that just works on so many levels. And you get to see the town, and indeed Wormwood, which is an interesting alien entity. I'm not going to say too much about why it's interesting, but you do characters interact with it in a fairly direct manner and it's very interesting and complex and quite alternative as well. I haven't seen many cases where aliens have been interacted with in this way and Wormwood is an interesting alien entity, let's say. I've counted things sort of similar to it but not exactly like it. So this is a very original and unique idea as well. You know, he's had a vague idea that other people have had before but then really has uh, Ty Thompson taking his own spin on things and really taking it in an interesting and frankly phenomenal way due to mostly all of the reasons that why I said he's got amazing writing phenomenal characters an amazing world building and the backstory and the overall story of the three novels works extremely well and I would really recommend uh, this trilogy overall because it's just a really fun trilogy dark in places, very light in others, got some amazing ideas and it does question certain things to do with obviously like as I said throughout this video, it questions morality of if you can do something should you and ethics and morality and also uh, racial prejudice it actually does bring up, that's actually less um, obvious than you might think, I mean they set in Nigeria and it does bring it up in an interesting way and it's just an interesting collection of characters, situation and plotline overall. So, with that said, that is it for this review. If you have read this trilogy or even the first book and you'd like to talk about them, then please leave a comment and we can have a discussion. Or if you'd like to know more about any of the books, then again, leave a comment and I'll try to answer that to the best of my knowledge. I mean, I've only read this trilogy once, so if you ask me something about it, I might not necessarily know the answer because, of course, you know, I've only read it once, so, you know, knowledge is limited to I me. Mean, this is a trilogy that well, I think it may benefit as well for the record from a uh, several reads um, and rereads and you will get more from it in time which I will definitely do in time and that is it for my review. All my social media links as well as the links to the three books can be found in the description box below as always and with that said that is it for this review so thank you for watching I'll see you another day. Bye for now.